So a couple of people have asked me if I will release the code that I was using for my uh, little ESP boards to uh, view the stuff on my phone and have it refresh. Well, I'm happy to do that, but I didn't want to release it without any explanation. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, so I've got two versions here. Um, the previous version you saw was kind of an older version. Um, all it did was refresh the page and that's on this one here. So we can connect to that now and I can show you what it looks like. So if I just select uh, light level ESP version one, and then we'll just go to a web browser. And we need to go to ah, super web thingy. The URL is already saved. And this is what we get. This is the just the page. It's refreshing. You can see that blue line at the top there. That's just showing that uh, cancel that. That's just showing that it's refreshing that page and you'll see the numbers change slightly. Uh, it'll change a lot more if I put my finger over that uh, LDR. Interestingly that LDR is um, reporting the other way so it's got a higher resistance whereas uh, this one has a lower number when you cover it up. Uh, but that's essentially it. Random number there actually isn't a random number it's a count so it's showing you how many times it's refreshed that page. Um, and those numbers are being reported from the ESP8266. So this is calling the home page, which this is, and uh, the ESP8266 is keeping track of the count and it's reporting the analog reading every single time that page is requested. Now this isn't a very good um, method of doing it because you're refreshing this page every time. Uh, so it can, be get, it can be a bit weird on the display. So if you wanted some kind of interactivity, this page is going to refresh and stop you from being able to do that. So I came up with another version, which is this one here. So let's turn that off and we'll just tell our phone to disconnect from that Wi-Fi. Push that out of the way. And then I'm going to hook up this other version. Now this one uses similar code, um, except it uses Ajax requests to update the data. So you're not refreshing the page, you're just calling another page on the ESP8266. Uh, and it works a lot nicer and you can change things like, uh, a lot nicer, a lot better. Uh, you can change things like um, the update speed. We're already connected. And there we go, it's refreshed that page. So this is our light level meter. So this is, it's reading 1000, cancel. Uh, 1024, if I put my hand over it there, it'll read a lower number, which is the opposite of that other one. Um, we've got very bright lights in here, so it uh, is reading quite high. And you'll see the count number also goes up. But we can, this page isn't refreshing every time. It's using Ajax to pull the data from another page on the ESP8266. I can change the update rate with this slider. So I can change it so it goes up to uh, close to four seconds. I think the, the top rate is five seconds there. Or I can bring that down to be 1.4 seconds. And we can show the data again. And then this should speed up. So the count number is going to increase. But we can actually go all the way to every 200 milliseconds. And then we're going to see it update very, very quickly. And that means it becomes quite responsive. So you'll see that number's changing very quickly. Now this is really easy to do. I'm using the basic AP example from the ESP8266 library and a little bit of HTML code. And I've written a tool um, to help you do code like that. So as long as you're able to write HTML code, I've um, HTML and JavaScript, I've written a, um, a web page and I'll make it available in the description where you can paste in your code and it will format it so that it doesn't throw up any errors in your Arduino IDE code because it, it doesn't like uh, double quotes and it doesn't like new lines or spaces like that. So it'll reformat all of that for you. Um, and if you put an at symbol somewhere in your code where you expect there to be a number, it will split that code out and put in a temporary variable for you to replace. So let's have a look at the code and then we'll uh, discuss it a little bit, but not too much. Um, you guys can pretty much figure it out for yourself. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. 
So this is the basic example you get in the ESP8266 Wi-Fi uh, library. So if we look down here, ESP8266 Wi-Fi, and it's this one here, the Wi-Fi access point. Now it's pretty simple. Um, you get uh, your SSID, you can change that to be whatever you like, it doesn't matter. And you also have a password in there as well. You can delete that, you don't need a password if you don't want to have one. This is the function that's going to serve the web page. It's the most important one here, really. Um, you have server.send, you've already created the server here, and then you're sending some HTML. We want to be able to customize that, so I'll show you in a, in a separate example in a second what's happening. And you'll see down here, here's the, uh, the call to serve that web page when someone goes to 192.168.4.1. So let's have a look at um, my other example. This one's a really simple one that refreshes the page every two seconds. So you'll see it largely looks the same. I haven't taken any out of any of these comments or anything. I've changed the SSID and I've removed the password. I set a uh, millisecond interval here. Um, that was so that I could change this here if I wanted to um, in code, but I decided against it. We've got our handle root function. I didn't change the name of that. I didn't need to and then I'm adding in my LDR reading. So that's the light dependent resistor on the board. Now, you'll notice I've got a string HTML here. So whereas in this example, we had H1 here, I'm giving it a string instead. So just down here, here's my string. I've gone a bit all out with the coding on here so that I've got my doc type correct. So this is the HTML5 recognized doc type. We've also got some metadata in here, hey, metadata HTTP equivalent refresh content two. Now that's gonna tell the page to refresh every two seconds. I've also added in some metadata for viewport uh, to change the width of the device. It makes it a bit easier to see in a mobile device. Now I've split up these strings. So at the end here, I've terminated this string with a double quote and a semicolon. That's so I can add more onto the string using plus equals. So this is uh, appending a value onto the end of my string. Now, because this is a float up here, that seems like it shouldn't really be allowed, but it is allowed. So you can append this float to the string. You don't need to convert it. You can just append it on the end. And then that's going between two divs. So the ending of the div is there. And then the beginning is here. It's called light. And we've also got random number. That's actually count, um, except for I didn't change that. And div ID random there. It's immaterial what they're called really. But um, then I'm adding on the count at the end there. And then we're serving it out here. And I'm increasing the count at the end of that call. And that's getting called down here on the forward slash root. Now that's not the interesting one, the one that refreshes itself, that's here. This is a fair bit more complex. In terms of the Arduino code, it's not more complex. It's more complex in terms of the HTML. So you'll see it's largely the same on handle root. We've, we're adding in the same information and serving it out again. But we're using some JavaScript to call a second page called get data. You'll see down here I've added um, a, another server.on statement. And if someone goes to forward slash data, it will serve up some data. Now I'm serving it up as a JSON string, um, which uh, means that we can pull out our data quite easily. We can navigate through that JSON using JavaScript. We can pass that JavaScript through and it, they appear like um, uh, an object for us to interact with. So it's kind of like an array. So it's pulling those things through. Now, this is what the code looks like. This is, um, this is Dreamweaver, but you can use something like Notepad++ to get some kind of for code highlighting for HTML code. Now, it's, it looks fairly complex in here, but really all we're doing is styling up here. This is our CSS. We have our body stuff here, which is everything that's gonna be happening on the page. Uh, these are the elements that are displayed. So we've got uh, our button, which is an an anchor tag, then we have a couple of divs. This div value, data values, this div here is a holder for the light value and the count number. And it means that I can toggle that on and off to be displayed. 
And we also have update view, which is another holder and that holds the slider. And I'm going to toggle that on and off. In our JavaScript, we've got uh, a variable, a Boolean, which is um, telling us whether the state has changed or not. And we have a change view. So when you push that button, it will change the view. So it will get rid of the data variables and show us the update slider uh, and vice versa. So once it's updated, it goes into this other version here. And then we change the variable at the end. Load doc is the function which pulls in new data. So uh, we're using Ajax to pull in a new uh, bit of data to the page. And what we're doing here is we're passing that JSON that comes through. And then we're going to append the levels, the light level to uh, our inner HTML of this div called light, which is just there. So it's going to append the inner HTML, which is that bit there. And the same for the count number here. Um, and that's, so this is like a callback function essentially. So we're going to start that going there. And then if it gets the ready state equals four and this dot status equals 200, it's going to perform these actions. And um, we've set a time interval here for this function to be called every two seconds. And when we change our, um, our slider, it's going to alter what that value is. So our, every time we change that slider, this function here gets called. And uh, we remove the timer, set the timer again using the value that's attached to the slider. You'll see I, um, I used a bit of code from some volume stuff. Uh, so that's why that's called volume. And that's essentially it. Um, but the difficult bit comes when you add this code into uh, one of your sketches. So let's jump to the normal sketch here. If I just type string HTML equals, and then we'll paste that in and we'll try and terminate that string. We can't because this is HTML code and it's going to look horrible. Uh, and so there are lots of, uh, double quotes in here. There are lots of things that are going to trip up the Arduino IDE. So I knocked up a little, web page. I'll put the link in the description for you. But it enables you to paste in your code. Now, one thing that you're going to want to do before you do that is figure out where your variables are going to go. Now, I already know that my variable is going to go here for the light level and my other variable for the counter is going to go just there. So I'm going to put some at symbols in there. Hopefully those are characters that you don't really use very often because um, it's going to search for those and strip those out. So when I paste it into this input box here on this web page, there's our code, all quite messy, but you'll see that we've got our at symbols in here ready to be stripped out. Uh, and then I click convert. You'll see that I've put some description up here so you can see what's going on, but it will convert that string into something the Arduino IDE can use. So you'll see it appends string HTML equals and then double quotes. So let's copy all of that out and then put it into our Wi-Fi access point. I'm just going to undo what I did there. So string HTML equals, we don't need that now. So if I just paste this in, you'll see that it's valid, valid code now. So I can just click compile and it won't throw up any errors whatsoever, even though we've got some, oh yeah, of course it will. <laughs> My variable doesn't exist. So let's uh, get rid of those. In fact, that could have been any variable we like. So if I just put int, my variable it won't throw up any errors so we can just put my variable back in there so now it won't throw up any errors so it's just a handy little tool for you to use if you want to if not you can do it by hand it's easy enough um, I did it by hand to start with and then I realized if I'm going to share it with you guys and you want to edit it it's going to be a real pain so uh, that's the code Okay, well, um, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you have questions, let me know in the uh, comments section and uh, I'll try and answer them for you. If not, there are loads of you guys already know way more about this stuff than I do. So I'm sure you'll be able to help anyone who's got questions. Um, doing web development stuff is sort of my day job. So uh, I find adding stuff like this to the ESP8266 kind of easier than writing the code itself. Uh, so anyway, thanks a lot. I'll speak to you soon.